Live from Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering Enterprise Connect 2016. Brought to you by Oracle ZDLRA, Vonage, and Cafe X. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Zontazanio. Hello everyone, welcome to the special presentation of theCUBE on the ground at Enterprise Connect 2016. I want to do a shout out to our sponsors, Oracle ZDLRA, Zero Data Loss Appliance, Cafe X and Vonage, thanks to our sponsors. Go buy their stuff, they're great, thank you very much. Okay, we're here, theCUBE on the ground. I'm John Furrier with Steve Santitano, and our next guest is Stephen Bra, who's the Braff, who's the Tata Communications Director of Mobile, UC, and Voice. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, gentlemen, for having me today. Very excited to talk to you about our company and our services here at Enterprise Connect. So Tata Communications is a huge company. We see Tata Consultancy around as well as tons of different groups. Break down what group you're in and what you guys are doing here. So uh, to understand our group is to understand the, the, the overall group we're part of. So Tata Sons has 600,000 employees. It's about $110 billion. Most people say, okay, that's in India. No, actually 70% of that is outside of India. So we're really known for some of our brands. Jaguar, Land Rover, Tetley T, Core Steel, Tata Consultancy Services, Tata Docomo, which is I think the fourth or fifth largest mobile operator in India with almost 100 million subscribers. And of course our company, Tata Communications, which we do a lot of the international communications around the world, enabling a lot of the entities that are um, exhibiting downstairs today. We handle one out of 10 phone calls worldwide. We connect one out of two mobile operators, which touch about four out of five mobile subscribers on the planet. Um, it, Fiber. And yeah, and our, our yeah. Uh, subsea cable network carries about 25% of the internet uh, in the world. We have, uh, we're the only company that has a uh, wholly owned subsea cable system that goes all the way around the planet. Our fiber is about 700,000 kilometers, which is a very large network that um, a lot of the people that are, that are mobile operators, Fortune 500, carries in general, a lot of the, again, um, the, the main players downstairs, they all will use our network or many of our managed services to enable their UC services worldwide. Talk about the mobile dynamic, because this show here and all the shows now, mobile first has been the buzzword you're hearing, but mobile is the device, that's where the software, sometimes it's in the cloud, it's in the application, it's becoming the focal point. How has that changed the dynamic for the customers and also the vendors supplying solutions? Yeah, so I mean, I, th I think um, with the shift like going to cloud now, and then now with mobile, and then with workforces with BY, BYOD, and um, constantly changing access topologies. It creates, I think, a lot of challenge for anyone providing a UC service because it's um, an over-the-top service that's kind of at, uh, it's routing however it's routing. Um, so the key is be able to control quality, control the pathway of the packets of your UC service. And, and so there's a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes that maybe a consumer wouldn't know on. A lot of technologies allow you to control how that voice packet or how that video packet or that message packet is being delivered in a way that optimizes quality. Because again, at a mobile operator, you're constantly switching cell sides, Wi-Fi access points, you're stepping in and out of access, and that creates a lot of complexity for anyone providing a UC service. Um, is SDN having an impact on that problem yet, or is that still sort of uh, in early days, if you could comment at all? I mean, there are a lot of players that are looking at SDN as their overall strategy. Mm -hmm. um, I just came from Mobile World Congress, where uh, in a way you start to see that approach done, uh, uh, Facebook and Google and others are looking at that um, for not only in the data warehouse, but now they're looking at that with um, access points. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to make that open source and be able to then have software define what the access points are doing? Um, so you're starting to see a lot of, uh, um, you know, in a way very similar SDN related um, approaches, uh, mm -hmm. both in mobile and I know in, in, in UC industry and voice as well. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about the genesis of the, the UC business at Tata? I mean, at Tata we've been um, an enabler of many of these uh, people in the industry for many years. So, I mean, it's something as simple as... Vertical we integration have, to some extent. I, we have a very large network. So anything yeah. from a, you know, a layer one to a layer three. So we're talking, you know, IPLCs to Ethernet to MPLS or IP Transit. We provide that. Um, and we provide that at a great scale for many of the, the people in the industry um, or Fortune 500 companies, SMBs mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, and we also provide a lot of managed services that could be around um, uh, DID, so local numbers, um, I have international toll-free numbers, um, 
you know, just a, a lot of those different services there. Yeah. Um, SIP trunking, uh, international A to Z. Mm -hmm. um, again, that all rides off of our core competency right. where we handle one out of 10 phone calls worldwide right. at a wholesale level. We're the, the biggest by a large right. amount. That same capability we bring into the UC space to help other entities. And we can also make this available through APIs, through cloud right. delivery as well. So is the UC team. business, sorry to interrupt you, but is the UC business, uh, are you a, an OEM provider or do you provide direct services to end users? So we provide, uh, so we don't manufacture equipment. Right, right. Um, but but the wholesale will, maybe is a better word. You so yeah, we yeah. provide services. Those services could be to other service providers. Okay. Um, and uh, those services could be to SMBs and Fortune 500 directly as well. Okay. So, uh, um, you know, we, we serve, uh, many many parties were um, agnostic across the many platforms you see in the UC industry as well. Um, as you see from many of our press releases, we work with Cisco, we work with Microsoft, uh, we work with a lot of the um, the Axis uh, hardware providers as well. Um, we're, we're we're kind of in these different businesses all together enabling them. So talk about the trend that's happening that's been, been discussed for a few years now. Should I build a mobile native app or should I be web responsive? And I'm, and I'm bringing the question specifically around what's been trending at this show, WebRTC. Um, and so coming back down to the device native role, because in UC it's all, any device, anywhere, any experience is kind of the vision most of these vendors have and that's what the customers don't want to get caught up into all these different nuances on an app development basis. How do you guys view that whole dynamic? The, at the end point from a, from a device standpoint, being native mobile taking advantage of the capabilities of the hardware versus having some sort of web uh, responsive kind of interface. Browser based. I, I mean, I, I guess from a voice call is a voice call, a message is a message, a packet is a packet. I mean, you have a, you have multiple ways in which to receive in, in, uh, that traffic or deliver that traffic. Um, I, you know, I think that you know the industry, like in mobile or any other ones, are constantly experimenting and kind of seeing what works and what doesn't. Uh, I think with the proliferation of apps in the, the last what seven or so years. Um, you know, you see a lot of people shifting that way. Now you see people looking at, okay, with SDKs and APIs, can I get features as a service where I don't actually code or provision these the things? Lego like, blocks model. Yeah, I, there was an article that went out on Friday in VentureBeat about that that I thought was quite interesting on the, the rise of feature as a service as almost a segment. So, um, you know, again, we serve these, these entities, these partners of ours, um, they still at the end of the day have a need to pass a packet, make a phone call, need a phone number, send a message, send an SMS, and we're, you know, we're enabling that. If it's you know, partners that are building their own apps, if it's a, a Fortune 500, then it's a different kind of engagement with them where we're bringing more <coughs> of a complete solution. So Talk about how about video? Okay, go ahead. That's video, a good one, huh? Yeah. Video, talk about video. I mean, video is constantly growing. Um, one thing I found quite interesting coming from Mobile World Congress just uh, two weeks ago is the biggest theme there was virtual reality and augmented reality. So I, I'm kind of curious to see, I don't see it yet in the enterprise, but it seems like that could be, people are calling that the fourth screen. So you have theater, the first screen, TV, the second screen, mobile, the third. And so how would that affect a UC experience having virtual reality either with people remotely or in office and how would you know the main players who are in uh, telepresence and video today kind of adapt and you need a lot of compute and, and bandwidth for those uh, it, <laughs> yeah so using a 4k video you're going to need a lot of bandwidth to deliver that or with augmented reality and pushing images into the in there and uh, I mean that's why the push of mobile World Congress was for 5g and really fast technologies to deliver it a lot of it is behind is if you're going to have this, it's got to be mobile, can't be wired in, it's going to have that fast uh, access. Steve, my final question is uh, your take on the show here, your role here, what are you doing at the show, what's your activities, and then what's the this show turning into, what's the industry turning into, where is UC going, UC Communications? I, you know, I, I, I've been in telecom for about 20 years, uh, and with a strong mobile focus, um, I was starting with VoIP, back uh, before 2000. So for me, it's great to see the industry almost in a VoIP de facto phase, moving to the cloud now, um, seeing mobile now in there. And it's, I think it's really interesting is now you have things in the mobile world called RCS, which looks a lot like UCC. And What's RCS stand for? Uh, rich communication suite. So it's basically um, um, the presence, it's um, rich uh, video content, um, I am. I am, all these things that you talk about and you see, that's 
in mobile speak, that's RCS. And I see these kind of worlds in a way colliding in a way slowly. And I think you know you see other entities that are that are not here at the event that maybe might be here in a few years that are out of Silicon Valley that are now in um, persistent chat and so forth that are now starting to creep into video and voice that probably we might start to see that as well, which creates, I think, a lot more um, innovation and opportunity for ultimately our customers who are you know, SMBs, Fortune 500. So. Right. One last question for you. Who out there should be talking to Tata? You know, if I say, I don't think it's uh, an SMB, or maybe it is, but anyway, the, the, the question is, who, 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 who do you want to talk to directly and who should be looking out to you directly? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, de it depends on, I guess, the company. So it's like, we don't have a client that we don't work with. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, it, I mean, if we're talking to somebody who provides a UC application suite, we're able to provide components or capabilities or features within that overall suite that they then take on and sell to their Fortune 500 clients. Mm -hmm. Or you have people who don't sell as much to Fortune 500 but more small and medium business. Again, we can provide these same sort of capabilities that around voice, around video, around mm -hmm. texting, around just basic connectivity, we can provide that. Um, and then you have clients that come here that come from large organizations or small ones that we can work we work with directly uh, day in day out as well that we either are combining part of their partners technology in a solution that we provide to them or some of our solutions depending on if they need conferencing they need UC as a service they need um, SIP trunking things of that nature you know we, if they've got other components already in place we are able to bring in stuff that doesn't require kind of a forklift to everything else they may have for the people watching in the segment with just describe it in a bumper sticker what is this show all about this year ah uh, gosh uh, in a bumper sticker I, I think uh, I, I think you're seeing a very strong shift that you see in the cloud um, and and uh, a shift from the, the savings and the, the scale you can go global very easily uh, you've got cost efficiencies and you know for me you know and I think it was you know uh, it, you know, pushed on last year, but this year it seems like a very strong cloud feel for me this year. All right, Steven is here from Tata Communications in, inside theCUBE on the ground here at Enterprise Connect 2016. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. Thanks. thanks.